I searched it very well. I didn't find... Hmm. Yeah. Both of these are the right door. I mean, if you think about it, Zero never actually said there was only one door with a nine on it. It is hit secret. So if there are two... If we split... That's not gonna work. You've got a notebook and a pen, right? Can I borrow them? Yeah, here. Look at this. You get it? The numbers on the top are all the combinations with digital roots of nine. The numbers on the bottom are the people who don't fit. There's only eight possibilities if we split up into two groups of three or four people. So... If three people go through the door, then four are left behind. If four go through, then three are left behind. Yeah. No way. Come to think of it. What is this room? It looks like it's set up, but what... Is that an altar? A coffin? No, it, it couldn't possibly be. Okay, I give up. I give up. I figured if we sat around here long enough, someone would volunteer. I guess nobody's got the guts to do it. What are you talking about? What? You guys didn't figure it out yet? <sighs> fine, fine. Let me enlighten you. Clover was mostly right with her little explanation earlier, but she missed something. She wasn't really wrong, she just... Ah, screw it! Let me just write it out. If you're trying to leave with a group of three and a group of four and get everybody out, Clover's right. But there's another way. Only one combination, though. If you split us up into groups of three, three, and one, you can make this combination. Wait, this means... Don't get me wrong here, I'm not trying to copy Ace or anything like that. Even if he hadn't been the hero back in the big hospital room, I'd still be saying the same thing. The same thing? Are you saying... Yeah, I am. I'll stay behind. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh. Why are you acting so heroic all of a sudden? Are you some kind of idiot? No, I am completely against this. I'll be goddamned if I'm gonna have to owe you for getting out of here. I'm against it too. I didn't want to leave Ace behind, and I don't want to leave you either. I don't like that idea. There's gotta be other options. I disagree as well. I can't say I care much for you being the hero. Well, there you go, Seven. Proposal denied. Clover's right. There's gotta be a better way than this. Hmm. Doesn't make any sense. Whoa, hold on a minute. I haven't said anything yet. Are you... agreeing? You wanna leave him here? Nah, I'm against it. I don't wanna leave Seven here alone. Then I don't see how it matters. I said alone. Huh? I said I don't want to leave Seven alone. W what the hell are you... What? You don't get it? I can't leave just one person. I need two more. Three people, including Seven. I'll be leaving behind three people. That's my proposal. No, those are my orders. What do you mean, orders? What the hell makes you think you can order us around? Who the hell's gonna listen to you? You all will. In three seconds, you won't have a choice. What? Three, two, one. See? I told you. Huh? What? Why? What the hell is that? The gun's from the other room. What room? One of the rooms behind door six. I should have known he was gonna do this. <laughs> well, it's too late now, fat ass. Damn it! <laughs> now, time for you to start following my orders. Ace, Lotus, congratulations. I've chosen you to come with me. Put your hands in the red. Hey, you deaf? I gave you an order. <sighs> right, but I didn't want to waste any bullets, but you guys just don't get it. Ha! 
really shot it? But why? Santa, why are you... Santa? I thought... I thought you were one of us. I thought we were friends. What? You knew about the leaf words and the four-leaf clover. What the hell is that shit? I've got no idea. You're lying! Shut up! Just shut up! You stupid bitch! You want me to put a bullet in your fucking head? Santa... All right, assholes. What are you still standing there for? Get over here and scan those bracelets. Oh, what's the matter? Your hearing's starting to go? Uh. <sighs> <sighs> That's it. It's the only way. Please, go. Huh? No way. Jumpy, what are you saying? If you stay here, you're going to be stuck, Jumpy. And so will Clover and Seven. I know. But you don't need to worry about us. We'll figure something out. Right, Seven? Uh, right. You just leave it to us. It's gonna piss me off to do what Santa says, but... Don't worry about me, either. There's still something I have to take care of. No! No! You can't! Ace! Lotus! Don't come over! Don't worry about me! Please! <laughs> Please. Uh. <sighs> Go. Oh. Fine. All right. Now let's get those hands in the scanner panel. <sighs> What's the hold up? What? You think I'm fucking around here? I don't give a shit about this girl. The red doesn't need a person, you know? All I need is the bracelet. You get it? Good. Now put your fucking hands on the scanner. I'm not gonna say it again. Fine. <sighs> Good job. Now, Lotus, pull that lever. As soon as the door opens, you get your ass in there. Try anything stupid, and you know what happens, right? Damn it. Good. Later. June. <sighs> so, what do you want to do, Junpei? What do you mean, what do I want to do? What can we do? What, what the hell is that? Shh, quiet! Where is it coming from? Could it be... Uh, hey! You're right. Let's open. But what? You're telling just shut. <sighs> Damn it. <sighs> no, no, no. Yeah. Do you think I think so. whoever or I know that. <sighs> Isn't there? Well, <sighs> there's not me. What? What the hell was that? Huh? What's up? Huh? Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, nothing. One, four, three. Huh? Huh? Hey. Oh my god. Huh. One, four, one, four. Huh. Why, why are you?
Oh? Is that you, Clover? I apologize for worrying you. Snake! You? Why? Junpei? And Seven? Is that you? Is everyone else there as well? Oh, jeez. You're, you're back! Gently now. My body's still a little weak. Oh, you're back! You're back! Oh. Come now, you're acting as though I've... Not as though you did! Come? You jerk! I see. I believe... In the shower room, there is... Because... Yeah, you all... Do I have it? Well, sorry. Don't worry. Well, then. I've got a pretty decent idea of what happened while I was indisposed. It's still something of a mystery who did all this, and why. The corpse in the shower room that looked like me, and the corpse in the captain's quarters. Why were they killed in the way they were? You don't know? No. Why would I? The guy in the shower room. We don't know who he is, so let's just call him Mr. X. Anyway, this Mr. X is wearing Snake's clothes. But you're wearing some kind of weird robes. That means someone took your clothes and put them on Mr. X. We need to figure out who that was. I apologize, but I have no idea who might have done this to me. I only just now woke up. I was unconscious during all the events you just described to me. They must have undressed me and changed my clothes during that time. When were you knocked out? When we split up to look for the red. Where did they get you? Do you remember? It was a small room in one of the hallways on sea deck. What happened? The same thing that happened to every one of us when we were abducted. A canister releasing some sort of gas was thrown into the room. I believe the gas is some sort of incapacitating agent. Then that means it was... Zero. Looks that way, huh? There's nothing else I have to tell you. When I woke up, I was in this coffin. Hmm. Why? Why did Zero make Mr. X wear Snake's clothes? How would that benefit Zero? I don't get it. What the hell does any of it mean? And I have no idea how I got the passcode for the coffin either. Truth had gone, truth had gone, and truth had gone. Where did those words come from? Why did I feel compelled? All I know is... <sighs> also, Snake and Clover... The ability to the fur and suck <laughs> There had been another ex- and a girl. Morphogenetic. The two murder. Switching club. The no new again. Huh. Zero. He's the real leader. Zero should- if we can- huh. At any rate, we'll have plenty of time to dis- Junpei? It was- that means we must hurt- Hey, uh- Isn't that obvious? Oh, which snake? Don't tell me- Come on! I- <laughs> Alright! Yes! Yep! Not yet. Huh? Before we go in, I'd like- You want- Yeah. But, but I wanna make- What do you mean? We don't need- Just do it, alright? But if the door opens, don't go in yet, okay? <sighs> Please, this is really important. I really need to check this, okay? Work with me here. Fine. Uh, uh. Huh, all right. So? Obvious. Now, what happens if we add Zero's bracelet? What? Zero's bracelet? Why don't you take it out, Clover? So you did know I had it. I picked it up because I thought it might be useful sometime. <laughs> this was on the left. If you look just to make... Then I should be able to open door 9. Though the big question is, if Cap is the mastermind of this game, would he really put one of these bracelets on? Anyway, uh, let's... Uh, okay. Now the captain's bracelet. And pull the lever. I knew it. Now, what does this tell us? Maybe the bracelet has to be on the wrist in order for it to work? No, that's impossible. Did you see how the panel showed a third asterisk when I scanned Cap's bracelet? Whether or not it's on your wrist doesn't matter. All you have to do is- mm. Huh. See, there's only one- That bracelet isn't- Is that- That's right. Then- Let's find it.
Let's try seven if this comes. Hey, it opened! What? Why? Isn't it obvious? Cap's bracelet is number six. But doesn't it say zero? This isn't a zero. The symbol on here isn't a number zero. It's a letter O. O? Oh. Whoa, wait a minute. I don't get it. I mean, we figured out that Cap's bracelet is six, right? Yeah. Does that mean there are two people with sixes? There is, most likely, only one person with a six. But I don't get it. Well, this is only an educated guess, but... I think June's number was never six to begin with. Her bracelet was flipped. In other words, June's real number is... Nine. That seems the most likely. Then all this number door stuff was just a load of crap? Why would you say that? Because if June is nine, then the numbers wouldn't match up. Here, look. List of all the numbered doors June's gone through. I'll let you know what I'm writing, okay, Snake? <laughs> and that's everything. I wrote down which door she went into and with whom. And I wrote what all the numbers were. So if you switch 9 in wherever there's a 6, the numbers don't work. If the digital root is 7, then you can't open door 4. If the digital root is... Clover. What do you mean? You're talking about 3, right? 3? Santa's always in the room with her. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Yes, that's right. What about it? That's quite simple, really. You told me that the first time you came to this room... Santa was the first to refuse to leave June behind. Now, doesn't that beg the question why? The answer is easy. Because Santa can't open door 9 with only 7 and Lotus. Of course, there's only one reason for that. His number isn't actually 3. Santa's real number, 7? Would you be so kind as to modify my sister's equations? Yeah, sure. This is what you were getting at, right, Snake? Hmm. Hmm. Thank you. That is exactly right, Seven. Santa's true number wasn't three. It was zero. No way. Santa is zero? And June was nine, not six. Conversely, Santa was zero, not three. Plus three and minus three, they cancel one another out. Nothing appears out of order. Santa was still playing by the rules of the nonary game this whole time. Precisely. So you're saying Santa planned this whole thing? I'm not sure if he acted alone or not, but I think it is safe to conclude that he is zero, if my hypothesis is correct. <laughs> hmm, Snake's hypothesis. Something doesn't seem right. Jean's bracelet being flipped. Even if that were possible, that would mean there are two number nine bracelets. And if that's the case... All right, that's enough talking. Let's go. It's high time we went through that door. Uh... Oh, it's right there. Oh. All right. I think these stairs go. Looks dry. Let's head down. Hey, it's a. Hmm, this is the Neptune symbol. The, uh, Neptune, I only have the Uranus key card. It's a different planet, plus it's the wrong kind of key. Let's turn around and go back for now. Yeah. Hey, another door. And a card reader this time. It's the Uranus symbol. This is the place. Hmm. Hmm. <gasps> hmm. There's so many. All right. If we want to get through that door out there, I say we... Okay. Very well. Sure thing. Good.
Sheldrake 5? I think I saw the rest of it. Yeah. Let's go to... Okay. Sheldrake. Have you heard of him? Yeah. There's a There's Brit Morphid... Really? Well, Clover also said something to me about that stuff. She did? Yeah, um... The ability, the ability to act the first... <sighs> that... You did? Well... Look, man, I didn't push it because we're in a hurry, but I'm kind of sick of this. How about you just... Tell you what? Don't give me that. Ugh. Very well, fine. I'll... But not here. Let's move... I suppose I might as well start by telling you why I kept quiet. To be honest, the explanation is quite simple. Zero told me not to. He didn't walk up and tell me, of course. He gave me a message engraved on a card. That's a braille card. It looks just like the one you showed us earlier. So you had two cards. No, only one. Huh? What do you mean? I thought that card just had some rules for the nonary game on it. Yes, it and those were the rules I read you. However, they were not the only thing on the card. There was something I didn't read. Well, perhaps I should say, there was something I couldn't read. And that was? Tell no one of the events that took place nine years ago. Tell, and I activate your sister's detonator. It's a threat on our lives. Oh. Well, um, well, what about Clover? Did she get a message from Zero Two? I don't believe she did. But doesn't it strike you as strange that Zero would shut my mouth, but not hers? Yeah. To be on the safe side, however, I told her it was best not to tell anyone. Still, apparently she told you. What's wrong with her telling me? I figured some stuff out with the thing she told me. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the whole activate her detonator thing was just a bluff. She's prancing around downstairs happy as a clam now that you're back. That's very true. I've decided I can trust you. I've decided to tell you the truth. The chance that Santa is zero is very high. I feel I can assume Santa doesn't have the time to observe us at the moment. And at any rate, even if he were, I very much doubt he would kill us. Why? Clover told me about the four-leaf clover, about the words. If he knew about that, then he was in my group during the first experiment. He wouldn't kill us, no matter what the situation was. <sighs> Hey, uh, Snake? Yes, I know. You... Yeah. How much do you know? Clover told me about... I see. The morphogenetic field in the experiments nine years prior. And the girl that died during the experiment. She told you all that, did she? Hmm. At any rate, I now know how much you've learned. All... Is who did this and why? Right. Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Yes. The people who organized the initial experiment were from a company called Cradle Pharmaceuticals. There were four of them running the show. Gentaro Hong Nagisa Teruak Kagachika. Hongo was the CEO. Nijisaki was his right-hand man. And Kubota led the company's research and development division. Musashido was their majority stockholder. It was these four people. Hmm... Let me simplify it for you. Kubota developed the technology required, and Musashido provided the cash. Huh, so it's Hongo, Nijisaki, Kubota, Musashido... Of course, more than four people were required to conduct an experiment of this scale. To that end, they organized a top-secret team. All in all, they gathered ten people or so. Those ten completed their team, and they were able to begin the project. They named it... The Nonary Project. The purpose of the experiment was to research the prospect of controlling a human mind through sheer will. The uh, vessel, I suppose you could say, for this control was the morphogenetic field. Huh. Why did the glycerin suddenly begin to crystallize? Why did the crystals... Why did the rat... Experiments... The morph... Why is that? Hmm. The answer is that the shape and through that field, the resonant event transmits information related to that answer. That's essentially the idea behind morphogenetic fields. But that's just a theory. Can't bring yourself to believe it? Yeah. Let's say someone killed another person because the devil told them to do it. Whether the devil exists or not has no relevance to the murder. They believe the devil exists. Whether or not he does is immaterial. 
So what matters here is that Hongo believed in the morphogenetic field. That's right. But I still don't get it. You said they wanted to figure out how to control people, right? That is what you were saying. Yes. So how are they going to do that with a morphogenetic field? I'll keep it simple. Let's suppose 10,000 people have solved a certain problem. The chance of you knowing that answer, even if no one has told you, will go up. Let's have another example, shall we? Say one million people were to do a handstand right now. Tomorrow, the chances of you doing a handstand would be higher, even if you had heard nothing of this hypothetical mass handstanding. Mankind's thought all of the resonant... Of course, yeah. Now, if there was a person who had the same effect as those millions of people, what would happen? If that one person were to do a handstand, other people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? Come on, there's no way. I'm not done. Imagine another scenario. This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event he created by doing that and use it to make other people do handstands? What would happen then? Mm. A person who has the power to write to the field and someone who can read from the same. You could think of them as the writer and the reader, or the transmitter and the receiver. What would the world be like if there were people with abilities like these? So the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver. And then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Close enough, at least. Come on, that's just crazy. Well, if you want to prove that, then you'll have to test it first. At least, that was how they thought. That was why they decided to do their experiment. That was how the Nonary Project began. By the way, Junpei, have you ever heard of the Gansfeld experiment? Yeah, that was an experiment. You place it, then you show one. Interest. So it was used to s the hospital. Hongo used some of- He be- Of course, they were- There were nine pairs of siblings taken, for 18 children total. For reasons that were not fully understood at the time, each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the 18 children were split into two groups of nine. The children who were put into Group Q were the ones who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mock experiment building known as Building Q. The children who excelled at receiving were put in Group A. Group A was then placed on the former hospital ship Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned the following. There are two things that can increase one's resonance with the field. The first is Epiphany. The other... Have you ever... It may seem the adding danger, that's... They set up a number of puzzles across the gigantic. The participants had to solve each one before they could move to the next room. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to include danger. He had detonated a bomb on the hull of the gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the nonary game as the ship sunk. By forcing the children into a life or death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of their tapping into the fields. The children from Group Q, on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building. Building Q duplicated the interior and puzzles of the gigantic exactly. Every detail was exactly the same. Hongo explained the situation to the children in Group Q. Solve the puzzles you find throughout the rooms. When you have the answers, transmit that information to the children in Group A. If you succeed, they will be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the Gigantic will sink. Those were his orders. Do you know why the astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? It was because NASA had access to a replica of the Apollo 13 capsule. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything. Everything was just like the real Apollo 13. NASA was able to replicate the situation the by putting themselves in the same... Once they found that, it was the same with the, the children from... And trans... The children, they had to act... That is the simple... Huh. Hey, Junpei, Snake! Get down here already! He's right. Let's go, shall we? Hold it. There's one more thing I want to ask you. Hmm? Are you sure that there were 18 kids? Why?
Well, I thought it was only 16. Oh, yes. That was what they said on the news, wasn't it? Yes. I have no doubt that 18 children were abducted. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? Well, yeah. Are you saying that the news got it wrong? Yes, I am. There were two more children. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. I imagine no one filed a police report when they went missing. They were brother and sister, like Clover and I. The brother's name was Aoi. The sister's name was... Her name was... <laughs> her name was Akane. That was the girl who... died. Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago? Then... who is Chun? No. No, 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 no. That it can't be true. Akane isn't that uncommon of a name. If Snake had known her last name, that's a different matter entirely. So they share a name. A lot of other people do too. It was someone else. Of course it was. <laughs> Is something wrong, Junpei? Your breathing sounds strange. Oh, uh, no, it's it's nothing. Let's get back down there. <sighs> I couldn't do it. Why didn't I ask? What's her last name? I just couldn't get the words. This is the next. Ugh, the door! Did that just close on its own? Don't tell me we can't go back. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> Damn it. It looks like it locks automatically. Is there any other way out? Well, uh, there's another door over on the right. There's a card reader next to it. Uh, it's got a red light on it, though, so I'm pretty sure it's locked, too. But there is a card reader, right? Yeah. Then perhaps if we find... Well, yeah... Uh, hey, are you saying we're gonna... Oh... <sighs> no. Well, we can... I... We have... Oh, we won't... <sighs> All right. 